so because we have put this asset on every places where we have an allocation and we require size different than zero and because size can be between zero and 16 plus max size of 62 C 65 64 this formula does not imply this because size can be zero the lower bound includes zero so we have what we call a precondition violation again so this is how what you're putting we go step by step um, on the program, it is what is the formula that holds at this program point. And if we have any precondition that is violated at any access point, we aim to one. Okay, so I'm finished with the uh, like explaining the technique. So if you have any questions, it's about this is now. Is, is, was it clear? One question, Jim. Yeah. So, to solve that, you're using fast solver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell it right now. Actually. So the tool we 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 have written is called Havoc. Um. So Havoc stands for Heat Aware Verifier for C program. Um. It's a, it does actually theorem proving for C program. So it's based on a theorem prover that is called Boogie. So what does Havoc basically is translate the C to uh, intermediate representation suitable for the theorem prover. And the theorem prover calls uh, a third tool that is called G3, which is a constraint solver. So the constraint solver implements uh, satisfiability theories or SMT theories, satisfiability modulo theories, which is basically you can have equalities in the, the, the formula. So G3 is a public tool. Uh, if you want to use it, uh, go on the Microsoft Research website. It's entirely public and it's very successful. It scores very well in all contexts of SMT solving. So it's like one of the very best SMT solvers. So we use that. And also there is a public URL for the Havoc tool. So um, it's a plugin for the Microsoft compiler. So it, it's not just going to work for the Microsoft compiler. And we use that in the security team in Microsoft to find bugs automatically in Microsoft products. So this allows us not only to find one or two vulnerabilities, but when we can characterize a specific property with a logical formula, we can actually check for all the codes to see if those formulas are satisfied. So that's how we do exhaustive checking or exhaustive verification of properties in Microsoft software. The annotation. So annotation is like, um, how I said, um, requires size different than zero, things like that. So whatever we want to, to check, we just write annotation, and it's just going to be given to the C compiler, and the plugin of the C compiler is going to handle them, translate them into a specific um, code um, that is actually included in the Boogie program, so Boogie is a theorem prover that we use, so have our translate code from C to an intermediate form called DPL, or Boogie programming language, and then the whole dot .dpl file contains not only the code that you want to check, but also the property you have specified. So a single file contains both the code that you want to check and also the annotation that you have translated to that language. So it makes a single file. And then Boogie takes control. Boogie actually is going to construct the verification condition. So it's going to infer which formula is true from statement to statement. And to see if um, um, preconditions are satisfied, it's called D3. D3, which is the constraint solver. So we have like a very big logical formula, and we give that to the constraint solver, and the constraint solver says, okay, that's good, or that's not good. And if it's good, the program is verified, there is no bug. If it's not good, we emit to one. So how about two analysis modes? We have 
as, as, as well as, uh, as a little before. We have the local checker and the global checker. So the local checker is just going to check each function independently and it's going to try to prove um, the formulas that we've given, like the preconditions we want to enforce. It's going to try to, um, to prove them just looking at the code inside the local function. And you have the global checking mode where you take the entry points of the kernel, for example, this is false. And so you, whenever you call a function, you infer what is the formula that holds at the call side, and then you use that formula as a precondition to the call function. So that allows you to propagate the verification condition from function to function like that. So obviously, global checking takes much more time. Um, to give you an example, uh, so I must say here for zero location, we only use local checking. So just using local checking, we were able to prove that 99% of location sites were not zero locations. So it's just not worth to do global analysis for this particular property because it does such a good job locally already that we can just like look manually the remaining warnings and that's it. So still for like a million line of code, it took approximately six hours um, to, to prove that. Uh, for other properties, though, you cannot just use the local checking because, uh, say, you want you want to prove something about pointers and pointers flow from function to function. So you just cannot, uh, unless the property is really simple, obviously.